welcome back it's Christine again with the artist pod and today we're going to talk about how to draw a ferret so let's get arting all right here is the ferret <laughs> ferrets are pretty cute they have a uh, white and then a distinctive sort of you know dark mask and then dark on the top of their heads so um we're just gonna get started like always you know strokes are um, as you put them in, you always put one in between, right? So one in between, one in between, and just follow the contour of uh, where you think the hair would be coming off. So typically what that means is as you come to the side, right, the hair is going to come off in this direction, and as you come down, it'll come down um, or straight up. So, and matching the fur length. Now ferrets, you know, for the most part, by an animal's nose, the hair is shorter. It's typically where the shortest hair you'll find on, on an animal is, usually, um, even on long-haired animals. Ferrets' hair can get pretty long or, you know, longer as we come out, so that'll, uh, um, you know, we'll extend our strokes as we do that, which makes it just a little easier when you can, you can sort of gain more ground when the strokes are longer. But by the nose, they're short and then right to create a separation right because the chin is is also white you have you know the, the mouth and then the chin bring the lines up to the edge um, and that'll create the separation right I'm not going over and then underneath you know when I'm doing the mouth it's gonna be you know as you come straight down in the middle but on the sides you can see I'm kind of angling my strokes a bit Middle comes straight down, that's how you keep, uh, that's how you avoid line conflicts. Side sort of loop. And then as the mouth comes in, you know, typically the hair will, will kind of go in the opposite direction a little bit here, you know, inward at each other until it sort of resets. Uh, I also find that you, you, know, you just pull the hair kind of straight off of the nose instead of trying to loop it. You can loop it once you get to the edge, but um, if you loop it off the nose, it'll create some line conflicts as you come to the edge of the, of the area here, right? If I'm looping this, then there'll be some line conflicts at the edge. But by coming straight off, um, you avoid that. And their hair comes straight off. It doesn't really loop down. Now the hair, you know, through here is a little longer. You see my strokes have increased in length. Hair on the ears is a bit shorter, typically. No difference for ferrets. All right, now on to brown. Just continuing it up from where the white was. Now for the pink. Kind of like the chin, right? The nose in the middle, I have it come straight down, and the edges I loop off to the sides. All right, we're gonna have the light source coming from over here. Like always, that means it's above and in front of, not behind or next to. Gives the best chance for my subject to, um, for its face to be in highlight. And this is just full pin pressure in the areas that the light would be hitting. Now all edges are in shadow, even on the side of the light source. So there's a little, going to be a little bit of a gap down here that would be in shadow, um, but it would be in highlight on the edge of the white where it runs right into the brown and there is no gap. But on the edge of the face as well, there's going to be a shadow. And that's just, you know, holding back my pin pressure.
will be a little bit of light over here. You know, the nose isn't deep enough to block out a lot, so um, I just find it easier to shade it first, and then we'll add a little bit of a highlight. When I'm doing it this way, it's not that I have to add full pin pressure, it's just that I'm adding more lines. I'm not holding back my pin pressure, though. Just not pressing. So thinking about the light source, right, it is going to round into shadow on this side with the light source coming over here, so the burst is going to be more along the inside. And then you know when I'm creating shadow, <clears throat> I'm holding back my pin pressure actively. So this isn't a lot. Just sort of filling in the lines and making sure I don't space them too close together. I mean, they can be pretty close. But if I bunch up too many, it'll start brightening it up like it did over here. So just enough to fill it in without brightening it up. Now there is a little bit of light on the chin. You can see right now it looks pretty flat. So you know, highlights and shadows are really kind of the, the king of art. They're what create the illusion of three-dimensional space on a two-dimensional plane. So we're just gonna add a little bit of light and we'll see how that transforms the chin. Um, and then I forgot to talk about it after I did it. But you can kind of see on the chin how just adding just that, that bit of highlight changes, you know, how it looked. It was flat, and now it looks like it has, you know, a bulge here, which is perfect. Um, now, when I'm highlighting the chin, usually I come over the hump, right? So I add the highlight in over the hump, and then I start fading it out. And you can see I faded it out for a while. Um, and brought some of that highlight all the way over just to give, you know, a little bit of a burst. Um, but the bulk of the highlight is through here and then it fades out once it sort of makes that transition all the way over that, uh, that sort of hump on the chin. And of course, as I mentioned, all edges are in shadow. All right, now we're gonna get to the um, brown, and then we'll do the pink, which is, you know, in the ear, uh, in both ears and the nose. I made this brown a little lighter than they typically would be, um, so that'll show up nicely on the black. Right by the eye, you know, I'm always careful. Um, and then the upper section of the eye here, this will be going into shadow whereas underneath will be going into highlight. But always careful, and you can have hair going into the eye, but it'll look out of place if like, you know, I have a stray hair that clearly isn't meant to be there, like that. Right, that goes in too far. The hair is clearly going out this way, so this errant little spot right here, um, you know, this is noticeable. So I'm gonna take that back off. So if I'm going to do it, it just has to make sense. It's certainly not where I just had it. And then often there's a little bit of shadowing right here on this side of the eye. Because our eyes have, you know, it's sort of the skin will be bulging back in here. And out on this side, subsequently because of that same thing, right? Our eyes are a ball in our head, so it's bulging back into the head. So here we'll have highlight and on this side shadow, whereas on this one it's here you have shadow and the back side highlight. Depends on the light source. 
quickly kicks back out though. But the hair here, like if I wanted to have some of this hair coming and covering it up, it could because that makes sense, the hair's going in that direction. This side it didn't, the hair's starting and, and pushing out on this side, and the hair's pulling into the eye. Depends on, on that particular animal's hair and how you've drawn it. And then once you get past just that little bit of shadow, oops, a little too close, um, you know, under this section, you can kick it right back into highlight. Some of this is going to be in highlight. Um, foreheads tend to have more highlight than anything else. I'm just sketching it all in shadow first. And then um, we'll mess up its hair a bit um, before moving on to the whiskers. And then the eyes. The eyes, uh, like a lot of small animals like this, it's hard to see their um, irises, so we're just going to do the, the light flare. Um, but first we have the nose. So right under here, right um, nose is rounding away as the, you know, right against the nostril, it's rounding away from us. So this is shadow. Whereas some of this is going to be highlight. And then of course this is highlight. Just being careful to feather it in so that there's not a jarring transition between shadow and highlight. You don't want to see a distinctive line either. It reads as fake to us, right? Like if, if the line is too perfect, we'll question it. And now as we round back underneath, this is also in shadow. So to, you know, mess up hair, basically to make it seem longer and more um, scraggly, I'm just going to take, you know, these little light pin pressure, just sort of, you know, to different directions. So coming down, coming up, and just coming along the edge of the face. Nothing big. Light pin pressure is important here because if it's too bright, it's going to look out of place. So in order for this to look more natural, it's got to be just very light strokes. And then their whiskers are a combination of white and black, so that'll also be scraggling up their face a bit. When we're done with the white, we'll switch over to the dark as well, basically on the edge of all of these edges. Starting with the white, and pull some of these down. As I do it, it's just, you know, light strokes, moving my arm at the shoulder, um, and being consistent from one side to the other. You know, it doesn't matter exactly where they are, as long as what you do on one side, you do on the other. Doing all of these in white right now can be potentially easier to add the black on top. We'll see. Now for the light flare. Light flare, I use this lasso tool and I draw in basically a selection in like a teardrop shape. So um, light source coming from above and to the right, so that means it'll come down, back up in kind of this teardrop. We're going to do the same thing on this side. And then we're just going to fill it after I make sure I'm on a different layer, which I am. And we're going to fill it with the foreground color, which I've already changed. Yeah, now what we're going to do on this side is take the lasso tool again 
and mimic the effect of hair coming into it. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to bring it up in these jagged lines. I'm going to push that deep into the selection and make them uneven, right? And then just erase it away. Now it looks like, you know, the hair here is blocking some of that highlight. All right, so that is how you draw a ferret. I hope that was helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.